This is Mark Franklin with Studio Daily. I am here with Steve Dixon, producer for the legendary band Aerosmith at the MGM Park Hotel, where Aerosmith has a residency at this theater for uh, how long is it? It's on and off this year. On and off uh, throughout uh, 2019. And they have implemented some things here that have not been seen, aside from their wild multimedia that you see on stage. THX has introduced a new sound system for VIPs that allows you to like kind of choose your own mix um, of what you can hear in the show. So Steve, can you tell us about this new technology that you're implementing here? Sure. You know, I think the, you know, the interesting to talk about what we're doing to, you know, today, I think we have to take a trip back two years. You know, we, you know, we started on, you know, this journey as a band uh, and we, we started on this kind of journey mm -hmm. uh, to, to think about what could be done next. You know, the band is going to be 50 years old th at the end of this year. Um, and so uh, the manager of the band, Larry Rudolph, called me and said, uh, we have this interesting opportunity to do a residency in Las Vegas. And um, I'd done several projects for him before. So he said, you know, we want to do something new and different. So I flew in, met with him. Uh, I went and met with uh, Joe and Stephen. And we started uh, with a conversation about uh, how we could do things differently in a theater that they'd been, you know, that they'd done in arenas for the last 47, you know, about at that time it was 47 years. You know, I, I kind of turned back time and I just said, you know, if we can think back to, uh, we, th we, we turn back to the 80s and we think about the first time we went to a movie theater and um, we, we, we heard this, this, I guess we would call it a sonic boom in a theater, which I called it. It was a, it was, it was an audio signature for a brand, and it was the THX Deep Note, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, it was a Star Wars, and then I heard it at uh, Top Gun, and it was the first time where you, where you realized that something was different, different. about yeah. sound, and so I, I, so what I said to them is I said, you know, we have the opportunity in a theater environment to, uh, to, to allow people to hear you like they've never heard you before and the light went on and I said you know um, this time when you do this th they need to experience you like they haven't before so they need to hear you like never before they need to see you like never before and we need to create uh, we need to create an environment that has never been has never been done before has never been seen before we started down a path um, of you know, researching technology, um, looking for partners, and um, and decided to create fan experiences like nobody's done anywhere. And so I spent a year of research, and um, and in doing that, first thing I did was start tracking down the principles at of THX. We partnered with um, Giles Martin, who is uh, you know in in my kind of in my mind of of you know, of uh, engineers and live show mixers, probably the Midas of, of ears, the golden ears in the world today. Um, Paul Hicks, who's done a lot of mixing with them. Uh, we found Mix Halo, who had a brilliant new technology that people hadn't used yet. Um, we we went from a visual perspective to, a, you know, the folks that uh, are creating the most cutting edge visual technology and the visual effects in the world and they're called Pixamondo and you know we started just rolling up this amazing talented pool of, of technical partners mm -hmm. uh, to create this you know spectacle mm -hmm. and um, so we um, and then you know probably eight months a year into it we decided to you know okay now we have all this technology how do we put the heart and soul into a show and that was a lady named uh, Amy Tinkham, who is the show director. And Amy, um, Amy is this amazing light 
she pulled this show together that is this 50-year look. This band has got just this raw power. You know, they, they go into these right. arenas, you know, they plug in their amps, and it's just an amazing energy. Actually, the technology competing with their raw power, you, you just can't compete. So it's like, it's harnessing this energy. Now I was gonna ask that. About 30 years ago, you went to uh, Arena to see Aerosmith or another big band, and it was just them on stage playing their heart out loud. So now, is this a result of having to compete with all the, the other technology out there? Uh, are they worried that people are gonna be on their phones diddling during a show, so give them something to listen to. No, you know, you know, it's, what's interesting is that, you know, to use, to use technology wisely is to, to not be gimmicky, right? right. For, it, it's, so while we have a lot of technology in this show, it is not gimmicky. You know, technolo good technology used well enhances your experience. Right. You walk into this show and as you walk out, you know, it, it, it enhances, it just, you know, it enhances who they are. You, 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 you like get to, an experience. you do, you, 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 you actually, when, you know, when Sweet Emotion is in the set list right now, and it's an ever changing set list, but when Sweet Emotion plays, when they do Sweet Emotion, you know, it's, it, you know, there's, it comes from everywhere. If you are in the audience, you know, you gotta remember, and you go to a you go to an average arena, and uh, our L Acoustics is our partner for the front of house sound with THX, and they have a new system called Elisa, and it's new technology and it's a way of ninety it's a ninety eight point sound I don't get that wrong, but it's a surround sound technology that's um, unmatched, and so by way of example you go into an average arena and you have a left-right hang, maybe sometimes you have a center hang, but you have a left-right hang, and in most arenas there may be 40 to 50 speakers for 15,000 people. We have about 50, this is configured for about 5,100 people a night, and there are 230 speakers. Wow. Now, the 230 speakers aren't there just to be loud. The 230 speakers are there for object-oriented placement, they're there for prox so proximity. They're there for definition, clarity. Well, the guys are up there, you know, playing and performing. The experience kind of is just consuming. It just, you're there and you're a part of it. The whole room is a part of it, mm -hmm. um, and everybody feels it. And so, you know, if you think about an arena or any theater you've ever gone to before, y you you can be sitting over to the left side of the stage or the right side of the stage and you're actually getting a mono signal. But at, with this system and the way that we've worked on it and THX certified it, it's that you know you can be over on the, kind of the left extreme and you're still getting hit by multiple sources of sound, which you know we, we as consumers in our daily lives, we haven't listened to mono sound since probably before your birth. But since you were at least a child, your children have never have never listened to mono sound. Right. I've not listened to mono sound since probably I was 10. Uh, we don't listen to mono sound, yet we... You know, the first mix of Star Wars was mono. <laughs> that's right, but not after that. Right. And right. we don't go to mono, we don't go to movies and see, hear mono sound. Um, and so, but m a lot of times we go to a concert and we're in mono. Hmm. Um, so that was what I wanted to change. And uh, in 2015, I have a project with uh, I had a project with Andrew Lloyd Webber, and it was what kind of opened my eyes to we really, really as an industry have to fix this. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we did. So from, from the stage perspective, that's what we've done for the front of house. On stage, uh, we were, this theater has a unique challenge, which we've turned into an asset. And the challenge is, is the theater is as wide as an arena floor is long. Hmm. So if you look at a typical hockey arena, a hockey arena is uh, 85 feet wide by 210 feet long. This stage is 150 feet wide or 145 wow. feet wide. So, you know, what you needed to do 
is you need to concentrate the performance space, which leaves a lot of space to the extremes, left and right. So what we decided to do was we decided to turn the left and right side of the stage into uh, audience zones, into party pit, or you know we called it an onstage VIP. So I, uh, I approached THX and Mixalo and one more um, and to say, hey, why don't we turn this into an, an onstage THX certified um, listening zone? Because there's no way, when you have a band playing live music, and you've got all these amps, and you've seen Aerosmith, you know that big wall of amps, right. you know, bleed is an issue. So if you're standing to the left or right of a stage like this and you've got all that power, then you have to figure out a way to make that left and right extreme sound good. So the only way to do that was to figure out a way to isolate the listening experience, and the only way to do that was, uh, in this particular case, in a THX certified way, was one worse triple driver hmm. uh, isolating headset. So, um, and then uh, we discovered Mixhalo, and they had this really cool technology where we could take different mixes, so we've got several soundboards in there, and we can do all of these different mixes, put it into their control module, and while you're listening to the show, you can dial up front of house mix, or you can dial Steven Tyler's mix, and you can hear what he's hearing. So it's what he gets in his headset. You can actually hear in his monitor what he's doing. I'm just thinking about all the other applications possible for like headsets like this. From an engineering standpoint, being able to like dial that in and uh, walk around the house and get an idea of how it sounds from different places without having to run around. I haven't tried them out yet, but I I'd really like to see what these things can do as far as uh, you know, working with them in the field, um, now it's probably overkill to use them on a shoot, but who knows? Well, I, I think the I think the um, I think that the possibilities you know the are endless. You know, if you go to a concert, you think about the, a concert is a sense of community. For you know, we like to gather as a group of people and sit in an auditorium and experience music together and in spite of the sound generally not being very good. Do you think the idea of using headsets while you're going in to the theater is going to seem a little strange to some people because you're Well, like, I thought about it. I thought about it at the beginning. I, 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 I thought, you know, it, does it take away, you know, does it take the away the experience. social side of yeah. it? You know, I, I, I asked myself those questions and I, and, and then I, I decided, okay, I want to go to some bars and hang out. It's 120 decibels. You can't talk over each other anyways. Mm -hmm. And if you're at a concert, you're there to listen. Um, and you may say a couple things to each other, but, you know, I, we have found that, uh, you know, we tested it for the first nine shows. Uh, the, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. I don't think we had any negative feedback. That's amazing. And the, um, and, and the, and the sound is so good. Uh, and, and the people are having, they're having a great time. The, the experience is so unique listening to the different mixes uh, that, that, that it's, I think it's really fantastic. And I think we're gonna probably try it um, with some of the other seats at one point. And, and so how do people listen to the different mixes? It's the headsets plug into a so the, phone? There's, there's a, uh, like an iPod device and the app is, presents itself and so you and your pl the headsets are plugged into it okay. and then you've got on a screen you've got your choice of mixes we have Stevens and we have front of house uh, what, what I found is we wanted the mixes to be authentic and the other mixes I don't think have enough in them to make it a good listening experience mm -hmm. so we chose to just have those two okay. I think you know like Joe Perry listens to wedges still so Joe likes to get uh, he only likes to have a kick drum and he likes he likes a kick drum he likes Steven's voice so if you turn to that yeah. mix in your ears it's not going to mean much to you it's not it, going to sound right right and if people he didn't understand it for, it for like right. diagnostic reasons right not for enjoyment yeah and, and so and people hit cool. that yeah. mix and they go that's that the worst one. sound I've ever heard and you, well editing it, uh, something and mixing something right <laughs> I'll listen to one track of something 
and another track and cut out something. Oh, that's horrible. It's like, yeah. well, I'm, I need to perfect this one so I right. can make this. So he's making his guitar better by just listening right. to the voice and the drums. I mean, listen, and a lot of like, folks that are techies would get that, would be like, oh, this is really cool. But I think for a lot of folks, I think sometimes we have the responsibility to help people help themselves have a good experience. And just yep. go to another aspect of the show. Yep. Um, who comes up with all the graphics and all the wild stuff that we see visually in the show? Amy Tinkham. Uh, Amy Tinkham led the charge on all things creative and visual. So, and she had a, um, she had a production designer uh, working with her named Josh Zengen. Um, however, most, most everything that you see of, from this show is Amy Tinkham. Uh, okay. She was the show director, is the show director, uh, and she worked hand in hand with the band. The band, you know, the band had had some input. Does, does she run that during the show? No, she. We we spent about a year. Uh, we spent about a year developing the show, you know, storyboarding it. The way the show was designed, it was you know, it's there's a thread through the show. You know, it's the it was the first time that the band, you know, the band would line up a set list and. You know, and it was you know based on kind of the city and uh, what they'd done before. You know, they have a, literally they have a book of all their set lists, and so they would uh, and you know they know the cities and the markets. And this was the first time that they said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're in your hands. You drive." And so she did. You know, 47 years of developing a way of doing things, and 47 years of habits and the way that you build a show and you do a show to allow somebody from the outside to come in and kind of fall into their hands and to guide you was, was a remarkable feat. And, uh, she, and she pulled it off and they trusted her and she didn't let him down. And the, and the best part about it is, you know, the fans love the show and the guys love doing it. Have they said how long I want to keep on doing this? Steven Tyler is 71 Already 70, now. yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're so they're already doing it into their a seventy. We've got shows up uh, on sale through December right now, um, and we're we're going to see how it goes. I think you know they are an arena act. They like playing arenas, um, and I think is uh, you know I think this show uh, is you know it's a living, breathing. It will continue to evolve, and I think that you know the the key to the key to making something like this work for a touring band who's used to playing arenas is to allow it to kind of have a life and evolve and change. And I think we have to keep it fresh for the band. We have to keep it fresh for the fans. So I think as long as we can do that, then we'll see how it goes. Thanks very much for uh, talking to us here on Studio Daily. My pleasure. Uh, look forward to seeing the show tonight. Looking forward to having you. I look forward to listening to the THX Onstage Experience. Oh. The THX Onstage oh. Experience featuring Mix Halo and one more triple driver headphones. That's not a name of a prod product, that's a paragraph, but <laughs> we'll go with it. It's a mouthful. Yes. Thank right, you. Thanks so much. All right.